In this uh, lecture, we'll look at solving a two-loop electrical circuit. Here, we are asked to find the transfer function between Vc1 of S and V of S. V of S, or V here, is the applied voltage. Vc1 is the potential across this capacitor. So we also have, in addition to the capacitor C1, we have R1, the inductor L, capacitor C2, and resistor R2. So there are two loops. The first thing we do is draw the currents. Currents in clockwise direction are positive. So we'll draw positive currents. So I1 for loop 1 and I2 for loop 2. Now we start writing the voltage equations by Kirchhoff's voltage law for the first loop. Now here Vr1 is the potential drop across resistor R1. Vc1 is the potential across capacitor C1. Vl is the potential across inductor L. Now what I have done here is substituted for Vr and VL. I am, I'm going to keep VC1 as is because this is the output. Similarly for the second loop I can write VC1 minus VC2 minus VR2 equal to 0. If you notice VC1 is negative in this equation and positive in this equation. That has to do with uh, how the current in the loop goes over the plates of the capacitor. Now this plate of the capacitor is at a higher potential than this plate. This current hits positive first then goes to the negative plate while as this current hits negative plate first and then goes to positive. Therefore Vc1 will appear positive in the equation for this loop and negative for the equation in this loop. I'll substitute for Vc2 and Vr2 in terms of the current in the loop, like so. Now we have the last two equations for the first loop on the left side and the second loop on the right side. This, these are uh, time domain equations. Notice that Vi1, Vc1 and I2 are functions of time can take a Laplace transform. So we take Laplace transform both equations and that's what we get. So I1 of S, remember, is the Laplace of I1 of T and S times I1 of S is the Laplace transform of dI1 of dt. Similarly, I2 of S divided by S is the Laplace transform of this integral I2 dt. Now we have another additional equation that relates the voltage across C2 to currents I1 and I2. And that's that. Now you might wonder why is this true? Now notice that the voltage charge relationship of a capacitor is given by V across a capacitor equal to Q in the capacitor divided by C. Q is the charge. Now current, if you integrate current, you get charge. And that's why this relationship holds. Same thing here too. And we take Laplace transform that equation. And that's what we get. Now we'll collect this, this, and rather this and this equation together right there. Now we want to find the relationship between Vc1 of S and V of S. We need to eliminate I1 and I2 somehow. Now how do we do that? First we eliminate or write I1 in terms of I2 and Vc1 from equation 3. From equation 2 I can write I2 in terms of Vc1 then I'll substitute I2 in this equation 
by this equation that that's what I get eliminate I2 now let me look at equation number 6 and 1 on the next page now I'll eliminate I1 by substituting this value that's what I get now I can write a relationship between VC1 and V that's a transfer function if you notice the highest power of s in this transfer function is cube that is this term multiplied by this term therefore this is a third order equation that's the end of this lecture